Hi everyone, welcome back to the heterogeneous parallel programming class. We are now at the beginning of the fifth week and we'll continue to cover important parallel computation uh, patterns. And uh, we're going to go into histogramming this week. The objective of this lecture is to help you to learn the parallel histogram computation. And um, uh, in, by itself, it is a very important, very useful computation. And um, it also is very different from all the patterns that we have covered so far in terms of output behavior of each thread. Uh, in particular, um, these threads will have interference when they write into their outputs. And then um, all the previous patterns that we have looked at so far, at algorithm design time, we can designate a thread to a particular output location. And by uh, organizing the, uh, the mapping of the output elements to the threads, we can avoid threads writing into each other's output and having inter interference. However, in this particular computation, um, it's very difficult to, uh, to achieve this goal. And therefore, uh, we, can, we have a good starting point for understanding the nature of output interference in parallel computation. So what is histogram? A histogramming is a method for extracting notable features and patterns from large data sets. Um, there are some good examples of the, this kind of computation. For example, in um, images, we can look for faces, we can look for skies, we can look for um, you know, the uh, animals, we can look at uh, look for buildings, and each um, each object in these uh, uh, images will have some unique uh, way. For example, if you we look at a piece of sky, then uh, all the pixels will have a fairly close color. Uh, may, maybe it's blue, maybe it's gray, depending on the weather, but they have you know, very similar uh, coloring. Whereas if we look at a uh, person, then uh, the distribution of color across these pixels will be very different. So if we summarize the, these kind of behavior or the, uh, this kind of signature, we can easily quickly determine uh, the, uh, whether a particular area in the image has a, uh, is really part of a sky or part of a person, a part of a vehicle, and so on. Second uh, uh, example of application is fraud detection in credit card transactions. And oftentimes, uh, we can uh, just kind of do a very quick summary of uh, where the, uh, the transactions are done. So for example, if the person is uh, mostly living in Urbana-Champaign, Illinois, then um, you know, the person's purchases will be in the stores that are around that area. So oftentimes, you probably have this experience, if you travel to another place, let's say California, and then you start to use your credit card, sometimes your credit card will be, um, will, will be uh, uh, rejected because suddenly um, the usage shows that um, the, uh, the credit card is being used in a different state. And you, uh, when by summarizing the transactions of all these stores in terms of which state they are in, the credit card companies can quickly determine that there is a change in behavior. And oftentimes you have to call the credit card company to say, I'm traveling to this state and um, uh, please do not block my credit card. But the point is uh, histogramming is, all, uh, in this case, it can be used to summarize all the transactions in terms of shops and then restaurants and so on, which state they are in, and therefore give the credit card company a very high level summary of potential change of behavior and probably some kind of uh, fraud in, the, in this case. Of course, you can, uh, you know, we can uh, go uh, even uh, into some of the scientific analysis using histogramming. We can correlate heavenly object movements in astrophysics, we can correlate the movement of different parts of the sky and so on. And um, uh, we can summarize how, co how much correlation each uh, object in uh, these different parts of the sky uh, are correlated in terms of their co correlation value. So the basic histograms is really uh, computed by having for each element in the data set, we use the value to identify a bin to increment. So in general, we'll have a fairly large range 
of values that we would uh, designate into a bin so that we can quickly summarize the nature of data into a fairly small uh, set of data that we can quickly compare or make this decision on. So here is a, a practical histogram example that we'll be using to illustrate the, um, the uh, computation and kernel design. So let's say if we have a sentence, parallel programming, uh, programming massively parallel processors. So this is a phrase that consists of characters or uh, in English letters. And we need to, uh, we would like to build a histogram of frequencies of each letter. So we would like to know in this particular phrase, how many A's are there, how many B's are there, how many C's are there. So well, if we look at it, we, we can find A in programming, there is one A there, a massive, that's another A, parallel, there are two A's, and there's no A in processors. So the summary would appear like we have four letter A's in, the, uh, in this phrase. And then we have, we, uh, you can go and look for that C, the C uh, appears in, proce uh, in processors, so there's one C letter, but no, uh, uh, it's, uh, there's no other occurrence of C in the phrase. So we can, if we summarize this uh, phrase, uh, the phrase in terms of the number of letters in each category, we can uh, have a very fast comparison of, let's say, two long um, sentences. For example, if we summarize a particular chapter of a book in terms of the number of letters, uh, you know, frequency of each letter, then uh, we can take two, chapter, uh, two ch chapters that we suspect are either very similar or identical. We can just compare the histogram that we, uh, we produce out of those two chapters. If the number of A's and B's and C's and so on match exactly between the two, then there's a very light, high likelihood that these two chapters are indeed identical. So um, this kind of mechanism can be used to, to do a very fast first order comparison of, the, of long uh, or large data sets. And once we, had, uh, we figured that uh, these data sets have identical histograms or very similar histograms, then we can uh, uh, actually uh, you know, zoom in to those to these situations and do a more detailed comparison. But just by looking at the histogram, we can quickly screen away the, um, the, uh, the chapters that are just not going to match with each other. So this gives us a very, very fast way to screen out or screen away uh, the cases that would uh, not be fruitful. So the, um, this is a typical usage you know, of, uh, of histogramming in uh, processing, analyzing, comparing large data sets. So the question is, how do we do this in parallel? We can, um, we have a, we can do a very simple, you know, use a very simple approach, having each thread to take a section of the input. So we, for example, if we need to take, uh, uh, use four threads to process this phrase, we can just cut the input into four sections. And then for each input letter uh, in each section, we use a atomic operation to build a histogram, and I will come back to this atomic operation point in the next lecture. So uh, I would just want to put a forward reference here to keep it, kind of give you a little bit alarm so that uh, you will expect what's going to happen uh, in the uh, next few lectures. So here uh, we, we showed the uh, detailed operation of histogram uh, in that example. So let's uh, say we, uh, we cut the uh, phrase into four sections, and each section will be processed by one thread. So we have thread zero, thread one, thread two, thread three. So um, each, uh, let's say we write a CUDA kernel where all the threads will be processing their individual uh, section. So in the first iteration of that loop in the kernel, you would expect that all the threads will be processing uh, the first uh, letter of their section. And so thread zero will see P, thread one will see M, thread two will see M, thread three will see E. So uh, each of them will go into a histogram data structure and increment the frequency in that uh, data structure. Each uh, letter will have a corresponding location in that array. So um, this is a perfect illustration that when thread one and thread two try to go and uh, uh, update their output 
you see that they actually need to go and increment the same counter that correspond to n. So we will need to figure, uh, have a way to, uh, to coordinate the access of these two, and that will lead to the uh, topic of atomic operations in the next lecture. Going, moving on, we have iteration two, where uh, everyone will be processing the second letter in, the, uh, in each section. So thread zero will see an R, thread uh, one will see an M, thread two will see an A, and thread three will see an L. So each one of them will be going to a different location, in this case, to uh, increment the counter. So we, we get progress in terms of the, 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 the non-zero counters or incremented counters in the, uh, in the memory. So we continue with iteration three. Now we have O, I, S, Y. And Y is not shown in this picture. So we continue to increment the counters and we continue to see more non-zero counters um, as a result of iteration three. And iteration four, we have G, N, S, and a space. So we will need to be able to increment uh, those, uh, you know, all, all these uh, values. So by the end, we see a uh, array of, uh, we, if we continue to do this and finish up the uh, iteration five, we will have uh, all these uh, letters uh, accounted for. And then obviously after iteration six, we will have completed the histogram. And at that point, we can use the histogram for our decision purposes. So at this point, we have introduced the basic concept of histogramming. And uh, there's no recommended reading uh, for this uh, part of the course. So um, uh, we will just continue into the next lecture. We will explain some of the deficiencies of this way of doing parallel computing. The simple way of doing histogramming is go not going to be uh, very efficient, or the, uh, it's, the performance is going to be low. So we're going to see uh, the reasons why and how we can correct that. Thank you.